fun. Where are we going to be sleeping? Maddie, don't you remember what happened last week when we were on Stockton Beach full driving and our car bloody broke down? But I want to keep adventuring. What are we going to do? Well, let's get into it. Well, 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 I'll tell you what, I wasn't expecting to be in this position this early on, hey? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> this episode is going to be a little bit different. Maddie and I have had a bit of bad luck. So we're going to show you, tell you everything under the sun to what to do when you're full drive touring, especially when you're solo touring, your car goes wrong, it's off at the shop and you've got a couple of weeks along your sleeve as to what to do. So we're going to show you how to overcome that. So here we are at the beautiful southern coast of New South Wales. Poor Dave the D-Max is stuck in the shop getting a new clutch. So, some dot points as to what we're going to cover in this episode. We'll cover everything from how much our recovery cost and how insurance got us through everything, the story of how it all happened, our back to basic camp setup we have for the next few weeks, and share and show you guys some of the ideas you can keep to keep having fun and adventuring when things go wrong whilst traveling. So, let's get into it. So let's start from the very beginning on how this whole mess came to be because boy, do we have a story for you. <laughs> we left home and we drove 900 kilometres to head over to Newcastle Way to head to Stockton Beach, one of the only beaches that you can drive on between Stockton all the way down to Victoria. It's a bit bloody hike, isn't uh, it? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> so what happened was we were going to do a whole YouTube segment talking about if you got bogged, what type of tyre pressures you need for the beach, for the road. Have you lowered your tyre pressures? I don't need to lower my tyre pressures, I've got a full drive. Yada, yada, yada. Dirt, corrugations, all that jazz. <laughs> <laughs> Except what happened was we got out, lowered our own tyre pressures, went out to Stockton Beach yep. and... <laughs> so basically what happened was, it was, we were on the beach for like 10 minutes, weren't we? Yeah. Um, we pulled out onto the beach and we just wanted to scope out what the day, where the best spots were, where the wind was, where we could do the video. And literally, as I was just turning around in, in the sand, basically, <laughs> I just noticed the car was getting bogged down, or I thought it was getting bogged down. And then, boom, there was this clutch smell. And, and then smoke. smoke. <laughs> like, I've never, ne there was no slippage or anything prior to that. It was absolutely the weirdest thing I've ever endeavoured anyways. So the car just stopped, and I've looked out the window, and we weren't even bogged. I'm going, what the hell is going on? And my foot is completely off the clutch. The car didn't even stall or anything like yeah. that. And I knew straight away that we had a problem. So I've actually gone to walk back all the way to the front entrance of Stockton Beach because there were people there doing like a dune buggy tour Yeah, or dune like buggy that. tour, hoping they could probably pull us out. So I was waiting on the UHF to yeah, see if Samuel... Yeah, that's right, because we had UHF radios, didn't we? <laughs> if Samuel could talk to me going, you know, what's going on? Yep. Anyway. So basically we're waiting around and then we had a Hilux coming along the beach and it was fantastic. They pulled over and they were really wanting to help us. And it just turns out we're too heavy and one Hilux wasn't able to get us out. So I'll drop in the video what happens next. It's unfortunately all just on our phone because we didn't have our camera or anything set up. So I'll drop that in now. Once we positioned the Hilux in front, we quickly got out of recovery gear and then this happened. No, the fuck, we got them stuck. <laughs> I think we need to let our tires down. Just As you can see in the distance there, there's a 79 series Toyota Land Cruiser coming over to also suss out what's going on which we eventually decided would need two cars to pull us out. Once all the vehicles were attached to one another via multiple snap straps, we finally got them together and got going. As you could tell, I was not happy, but was super happy that I had people there to be able to help them. And as you saw just then, like it took a Hilux and a... <laughs> and a Land Cruiser. What sort of Land Cruiser is it? <laughs> 79 series. Oh, Even after we go to a full series. drive show, you still don't know what it is. No, that's all good. Um, and then, unfortunately, my old man and my mum were coming up for Father's Day that weekend. Happy Father's Day, Jeremy. <laughs> what a good start to Father's Day. <laughs> to then, to the point where we had to get snatch strapped from Stockton Beach, about 20 kilometres up the road to One Mile Beach. Well, I think it's 29 kilometres or yeah. something like that. 
And then we got pulled over by the police on the way there, even though we had Googled that it was completely legal uh, but to hang be able on. to do this. It wasn't even, we weren't even driving full on. Two minutes into driving, went around the roundabout. As I'm getting snatched <laughs> behind the car, so I have no drive to the car and dad's having to pull me along. We hear um, these sirens and we're like, oh no. What's going on? <laughs> Anyways, he let us go. He actually escorted us half the way because I don't know why. He just, he originally said it was illegal and then he looked it up and realized it was legal to tow an A-frame car as long as you had power steering, all the other rest and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's where we are now and that's what brought us to where we are. So the next thing on our mind was, how the hell are we going to get this car back home? That's right. Like, I was stressing, we we're 900 kilometres away from home. How the hell were we going to get this back? We had to be at work, like, what, four days later? And all yeah. that was going through my head was thousands and thousands of dollars. So let's do a quick breakdown as to how much everything cost, what happened, and we'll go from there. So we're with NRMA Insurance, and last time we had a problem was when we were down in South Australia. Port and Lincoln. Really, yeah, that's yeah. right. That was good. Nice, Mads. <laughs> you done so well. <laughs> Had a similar thing happen. So our clutch went about two and a half years ago. And we're going, what the hell? I don't drive the car like an idiot too much. So let's just get into how much everything cost. NRMA Insurance, we car covered by roadside assist. And we've sort of got the premium ultimate care, which costs us about $219 a year. Yeah. And I'll tell you what it covers. So this insurance covers unlimited service call outs, metro towing, country towing up to 100 kilometers, remote towing up to 100 kilometers, breakdown travel assistance up to $4,000. Now this was sort of the game changer because when we were on the phone to them, we, we told them the scenario where we were, what was going on. And they said we could actually use $3,000 of that to put towards towing or any other expenses out of that $4,000. So we actually had things on offer, like they were gonna fly us home or we could stay up there and they pay for accommodation and give us a hire car and that would also be covered under insurance as well. So that was a really good thing to hear. The next thing that we're moving on to is um, obviously you've got all your locksmith stuff, you've got your taxi allowances, trailer boat caravan towing. Um, the stitch up there was, which is something that we didn't really look into, was it only covers up to three and a half ton. Now we're, we're sweet when it comes to that. We're sitting right on our GVM around our three ton mark. Shh. We're not going to put it on the weights, are we? <laughs> no. But I mean, if you have a Land Cruiser or something like that, that's easily over three and a half tons. Yeah. So that's definitely something you want to look into when it comes to your insurance and your roadside assist because that's something that can bring you unstuck despite everything else getting all the ticks yeah. in the boxes. Yeah, I think definitely familiarising yourself with what cover you have is really important because Absolutely. there's always those little keyholes that they can get out. Yeah, it's you. so easy just to go on the premium care, but other services such as the, I think there's a full drive yeah. Um, insurance company that's dedicated in Australia and my understanding is it is quite high and it is a bit of a premium but I'm sure there's a lot of benefits little, yeah. yeah a lot of benefits that and you know NRMA, Amy, um, all the other I don't know I'm not going to sit here and list all the insurances <laughs> off um, that they might not have it's not that. <laughs> that's right so then the, then you can get a couple add-ons as well you can get your windscreen repair key replacement larger vehicle towing travel assistance for pets which doesn't bother us and 10 kilometers extra for towing so that's interesting that you can pay um, I think it's like an extra two dollars per ten kilometres a year, but there's a sneaky loophole where you get that extra three thousand dollars they can put towards towing, anyways. Yeah, you may as well just figure it out and use that. Yeah. If, yeah. if you don't need the towing in fire expense, then yeah, take the accommodation. So how did we actually get home? Well, there were three options. The first one was we could get it towed to a mechanic and get a flight back to where we lived. The second option was get it towed to a mechanic and stay in Newcastle and have to call work and go, oh, sorry, can't make it back. Or well, the third option? Well, the third option was the longest option, but it was the easiest for everyone, so we didn't have to go back up to Newcastle. So what actually happened was we got a lift from my old man. He was up there for Father's Day a couple of days later. Um, we left the car at one of Maddie's like extended family friend's house after we got snatched there again for a second time. Um, end up then having to borrow a hire car. So we got a hire car in Canberra because that's where my family lives. Went back home, got on the phone, started ringing around NRMA and they started throwing quotes at us. So we'll start throwing in all the money stuff here. $1,600 to get the car towed back from Newcastle on a truck down to where we live. 
Um, and then it was going to be an extra two and a half thousand dollars to get the clutch replaced. So, you know, we're looking at like three plus thousand dollars for this trip. Adds up. I know, and it just adds up. So what we ended up doing is we ended up going back home. They did that and then they told us a part of that three thousand dollars that we just spoke of before that they would cover the towing from Newcastle to, we're not going to tell you where we live, but the border <laughs> of Victoria, right? All covered. Yeah. Then we get the car into the mechanic. He checks it out. Looks over our um, policy, our policy, yeah. all that, and our clutch is actually still in warranty. Yay! So we're going <laughs> hell yeah. We've gotten out of sixteen hundred dollars because of the insurance. We're now no longer two and a half grand out of debt. And then we found out that we're still within the warranty period, which is three years for our clutch. Thank God it was three years because oh it was like two years and ten months. I cutting it fine. <laughs> I know. And then after you diagnose it, it actually turns out the reason why our clutch went. The reason why our clutch went was because when we originally got it done in South Australia, there's two types of clutches that we got put into our car. It was, by, it was called like a, a full terrain or something like that from Repco. Yeah. And there's a detuned model and a normal tuned model that comes from overseas because apparently four-wheel drives, when they come from overseas, they get detuned and we can go down that story as well. So they put in the detuned model because as we all know, if you watched our video of a walk around of our car, which I put just here, our car was actually tuned. So not only have we put a clutch into a detuned car, we have put it into an overpowered. It's, we didn't get that much more power, but it obviously <laughs> overloads the clutch. So they have now put in, or we've just sort of found out that they're going to be putting in um, the correct clutch for that. So we shouldn't have too many issues. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> and I'll just add in there as well, in terms of the hire car. So we've got two and a half weeks worth of hire car. So the good thing about sticking with one insurance company is you get like these loyalty discounts or something yeah, like you that. Do. You usually only get X amount of kilometers per day for an X amount of period. But because we had been with NRMA for so long, they sort of extended our cover and the vehicle that we got. So we even though we don't have like a proper full -wheel drive with us, we are still able to use it to go away and do camping like this, as well as do as many kilometers as we like up until next week. So now we're gonna tune it back to when we first started camping, back to the basics. We've mm -hmm. got all our gear that we started off with because poor Dave the D-Max is in the shop. I, I actually feel like, remember when we first met when we were 18 and we've just gone with the most basic stuff. We've got the tent, we've got the esky, we've got the ice, you know. You definitely miss out Walking on some down things, lane. like <laughs> charging, food, like we no longer have the fridge, you have to go back to esky, just got to check everything's still frozen. It really does bring you back. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to talk through back to our basics, everything that we've got and everything that we're going to do on this trip. Absolutely. So we'll show you around our campsite. We'll give you all the ideas of what you can do between those weeks when you don't have a car to make sure you're still traveling, adventuring and enjoying everything. And what we're going to do as well to keep, keep things <laughs> as much as alive as possible. We'll still have fun. <laughs> we definitely will still have fun. You don't need a four wheel drive to go everywhere and have fun. Fuck your ears, Dave. <laughs>